Are you self-employed? You're on LLC, got an S-Corp, C-Corp, and you're looking to go purchase a home. You're looking to go buy a car. You go to the lender. They want proof of income. You show them some tax returns. or You show them some bank statements of money you got going in and money you pulled out your bank, but you don't have any kind of formal way of reporting your income. You never got a W-2. You never did a 1099. And you have no way of showing it. And now you're stuck because you're making money. You got income to prove you, you actually got money in the bank to sh uh, show it as well, but you have no formal way of showing, listen, this is how my income is stated. This conversation is for you guys, okay? Listen, when well, the first thing we start talking about payroll, payroll we know is the actual income that you have coming in from a particular job, be it if you work for somebody or if you own a company yourself. What I want people to understand, when we start talking about having payroll and you're self-employed, you want to get it set up. The basic thing you need to look for is, number one, we say, hey, D, how much do I need to pay myself? What do I need to set myself up at payroll? Now, what I would tell anyone, you want to set yourself up just to cover your basic living expenses, right? When we say your basic living expenses. Now, if you don't even have enough to cover your basic living expenses, you might not necessarily want to start payroll because there are additional costs. We'll talk about that a little later that come along with having payroll that you may not be able to cover. So if you can't cover, put yourself on payroll for your basic living expenses. What am I and what do I mean by basic living expenses? We're talking about utilities, groceries, incidentals. Incidentals maybe clothing, uh, going out, things like that. You know, if you you want you, that's the basic that you want to start yourself off as payroll at because again, that's normally if you don't have payroll, those are the normal things that you may be pulling out of your business account if you're self-employed, right? You may be pulling in five thousand dollars a month, which like I say. One week you're pulling out the mortgage, next week you're pulling out grocery money, and these are just basic withdrawals. They're not payroll, and I'll give an explanation on that in a second. But the basic payroll that you want to pay yourself stated would be your basic living expenses. Again, the utilities, groceries, and those basic living, uh, living incidentals. Now, again, when I just brought the whole point of withdrawals, withdrawals are just money that you pulled out of your account. And the thing of it is, you can't report that to the IRS as income because unless you give yourself a 1099. And we say we do have payroll, the difference between a withdrawal and payroll, you actually, payroll, you actually uh, file a net with the IRS, the state, and your, maybe uh, the, the, your state department of revenue, and also the department of, of, of labor, just in case you may need, you know, unemployment, things like that. You're reporting that on a monthly or quarterly basis and annual basis to let them know this is the income I have coming in. The actual with, uh, withdrawals, which is money you put in that account, and if you're gonna report that, you will issue out a 1099 at the end of the year, right? Far too often people feel like because they have money coming in, they pull it out, the money they pull it out will be considered payroll. The problem is, if you don't report that money that, that came out, at least, at least on the 1099, it's irrelevant. And that's very, very important. So I always uh, err on the caution of, Guys, if you don't know what you're doing, go get proper counsel. Go get you an accountant. Go get you a payroll company. The money that you pay for those particular services will save you such a headache if you don't know what the hell you're doing, especially you get in a situation where you're ready to make a move, make a home purchase, car purchase, or even go you know, high level with certain things. You want to make sure you got your ducks in a row with that. So if you don't know what you're doing, guys, make sure you get proper counsel with that. So we start, again, looking at going back to the whole process we know what a withdrawal is that's the money you pulled out and if you want to ever report it remember you got to issue yourself out of 1099 and also forward that information to the irs to let the irs know that you report it as a uh, independent contractor we go to the payroll side we actually allocating a certain amount to go to you keep in mind that when you're doing this uh uh, uh for the payroll, you're going to be also be reporting it to those different bodies, IRS, your State Department of Revenue, and probably your state unemployment, right? When you're doing that, reporting that amount on a monthly or quarterly basis, guys, good rule of thumb to make sure you get allocating about 25% of the gross payroll to some uh, uh, custodial account for payroll taxes, okay? You got to keep that in mind. Make sure you allocate probably a quarter each payroll to some account to cover that uh, federal taxes, the uh, uh, the state the state uh, taxes, and probably unemployment. Okay, just a good rule of thumb to do. As you go through the process, you can kind of go and look and say, "Hey, man, I don't necessarily need that much. Maybe I can reduce it down to twenty or fifteen percent." But I would start off at twenty five percent. Okay, because remember, the actual individual that you're paying yourself. Example, you pay yourself two thousand dollars a month 
the net the net after taxes taken out maybe fifteen hundred dollars right right fifteen hundred dollars uh let's say uh, six and four let's say let's say uh we're talking two thousand dollars and that's five quarter or twenty five percent is five grand so let's say fifteen grand fifteen hundred dollars right so twenty five percent of two thousand is fifteen uh is of uh five hundred we take out that you got fifteen hundred dollars that's the net amount that five hundred dollars in taxes is taken out from that individual but the company the company also has to pay five hundred dollars so that's a thousand dollars has to go to the IRS for that payroll keep that in mind so that's why we want to make sure that we're allocating this money in some kind of custodial account where we actually be able to cover our payroll taxes okay you got to make sure you're doing this guys there are no shortage of uh websites and different calculators you can find on on a, that a simple google search one pull up in regards to how to uh, uh figure out payroll taxes okay and they can go from you can put in your state where they'll allocate how much will be you report to your state uh, department of revenue and also to your state unemployment okay so you just a uh, easy google search for a payroll calculator will help you guys out with that okay um again what, what starts a lot of this uh conversation with people that are self-employed or working, you know, working for uh, as independent contractors is when they try to, you know, purchase a home or get a a car or something like that. It comes up, hey, do you have any? Uh, 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 how's your income stated? And a lot of times, if you haven't had payroll, they got it. Uh, most mortgage lenders are going to want to look at two years of tax returns. They take the average of the net income on your Schedule C. Well, that's the average of line thirty. Well, line thirty one on your Schedule C. Dividing that by 24 to see if you know what's the monthly income with that, and that's kind of they'll they'll base it, uh, how much they'll you know give you uh, for for a mortgage, and to be going through there to have those have all that kind of stuff, it can be tedious or you know headaches. Them. So at the end of the day, if you're making that kind of income and you want to set yourself up where it'll be a lot easier, where they can just take a W two from you. You might want to go into payroll because that's what pretty much what they're looking to have you know that reported income with doing it keeping in mind guys uh the responsibility of having a payroll you're going to have to make those quarterly filings i mean those filings to them they can be with your 941 to your federal again these are quarterly reports or monthly reports and that varies depending on how much money you make okay again uh, you can get you a payroll company you can get you uh, some account or somebody to do this stuff for you or you just take the time to get educate yourself but mind you if you're not familiar with it what i would advise if you're not familiar with it and you don't know what to do get somebody that knows how to do it you make them pay them extra so they can teach you because it is it's not simple but it's not extremely difficult but i would advise you if you say listen i don't want to do this long term get the service started find out what they're doing learn it for about six months and then you, if you want to branch out do your own thing i get it right but if you're not familiar with it do not start off doing it yourself i'm an accountant guys i'm just my best advice to you with doing this okay but keep in mind when you're getting payroll started you have and this is one of the biggest things that uh have bit a lot of my clients over the past 20 years in the butt no matter how many times i tell them make sure you're allocating that 25 percent to the side and you and it may again it may not be that much but again when you, you have that responsibility of the uh the quarter the, the maybe possible monthly quarterly and annual tax filings okay those forms have to be turned in by certain dates and deadlines. If you don't, if you don't, there are fees and penalties associated with it. Trust me when I tell you this. They wrap up fast if you don't stay on top of it. So there's a big responsibility outside of fee, outside of the cost that you will pay in the taxes. But the uh, the penalties associated with it can go astronomical, guys, if you don't stay on top of it, okay? But it, again, in the grand scheme of things, it will make life a whole lot easier for you if you're self-employed. If you want to show income that will help you and we're going to report income that will um, um, uh, give you an opportunity to, to, to get a mortgage, get a car. Could you go with your basic uh, um, 1099 or tax return, regardless if you come to 1099 or if the 1099 is still going to end up more than likely because it has to go to uh, Schedule C on your income taxes, you still got to show two years, standard, usually two, two years of tax returns. Some may go off of uh, just bank statements, but again, typically when you go to places like that, the cost of the loan, what I mean by the interest rate, is going to be a lot higher, okay? But we want to make life as easy as possible for us. Get the payroll started, right? 
get the payroll started. Again, if the cost of the payroll is 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 the actual amount, payroll shouldn't be that much, especially in relation to um, uh, what you'd be making. If you're making enough, you feel that can put you in a situation where you can purchase a home or get your car. The issue comes up a lot of times just staying on top of make sure you uh, you can report the taxes and actually pay the taxes that are due on that qu quarterly basis. Okay, but again, basic rule of thumb, guys. Basic rule of thumb. Look at uh, your basic living expenses, okay, utilities, groceries, and incidentals, right? Allocate 25% of that gross payroll to, you know, the to the taxes. Put that in a custodial account. When you say, uh, even if we want to go past the actual um, uh, basic living expenses, and your lender can tell you on the front end, hey, this is how much money you need to be showing. This is how much money you need to be showing for you to qualify for this loan. If you want to adjust your payroll and just pay yourself a little bit more to qualify for that, you can always do that. Be it where you do it yourself from a reporting standpoint or you let your payroll company know. But keep in mind there will be an increase in the payroll tax amount in relation to the amount that you increase the payroll for. But again, that's when you had a conversation with your your lenders to find out exactly uh, what you need uh, to, to show, okay? Because far too often people are out here making money, they're self-employed, but the actual reporting process, that's not taken care of, okay? But in payroll in a nutshell, I just I just want to uh, go over that with you guys. guys. Like I said, I am an accountant, and I'm going to tell you guys the right way to do things. And I understand sometimes people want to try to do things on their own with doing it. That's fine. Because anybody can build a house. Anybody can put a motor in a car. But sometimes you do need professionals. And that's why I say, again, if you do want to go down the road of trying to do it yourself, I still advise hire somebody at first. Learn what they're doing. If you want to step out there and go from there. But I definitely wouldn't advise anyone, especially if you have any kind of financial background, I would never start it off. I wouldn't. No matter how smart you are, because there are a lot of things you just don't know um, that'll be associated with it. You can do it and it'd be great, but you can do it; it can be uh, devastating. And I can tell you right now, now one of those governing bodies, be it the IRS, whatever State Department of Revenue, or whatever State Department of Labor, cares that you didn't know. They could care less. What they care about is when can you pay these penalties? When can you pay these fines? Okay. Best of luck to you guys. Make sure you subscribe to Mr. Short Doll on YouTube where we talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and investing. A lot of great information on the channel. Most importantly, to get more great information like what we just talked about and to stay in, in, uh, in more great information coming down the pipe, hit that dollar sign in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe. And also make sure you hit the bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video. Good luck now.